Monday. Sorry for the change in time today. It caught me off guard as much as it did you. Normally, I'd be here in a couple of hours. And uh, when I set up my session today, time zones and so forth, um, things weren't working on my brain. So I, I'm seeing you today at 4 p.m. Uh, versus my normal 6 p.m. Uh, a few of you have mentioned that the times um, and the notifications aren't looking right on your end. If that is you, uh, this session was scheduled for uh, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so New York, Toronto time. If it is appearing at a different time on your end, please just drop me a note and let me know. Um, I had someone contact me this morning that said it was showing at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. So I want to make sure uh, we do live in a global world and, and uh, there's a lot of hands behind the scenes that, that bring us uh, forward to you with Life Pro every session. So if you're having any issues with, with seeing the, the correct time that these sessions are at, uh, please just make a comment today. Uh, today, uh, it's it's still the new year. We're almost at the end of January, but I've had so many uh, new users this month and, and good for you for embracing the benefits of vibration plates. Um, you know, it, it can be a very complicated topic, but it's, it's really not once you sort of get a physical experience with your machine. So you do all this reading, you do all this research, and then it's, you get this thing at home and what do I do on it? So I'm going to go over very briefly a couple of starting tips. And while I walk you through that, I'm just going to go over, you know, there's, there's always lots of different questions. You're all looking at this for different reasons, different benefits, but there's some common things that new users experience. Uh, some of these things are also common. If you used to use a plate for a period of time and you took a big long break and you're just getting started back, or you're changing your approach and how you're using your machine. You know, maybe you're you're doing more fitness on it, or or uh, maybe you've started doing some massage and and sometimes anything from sensation uh, to fatigue uh, to symptoms uh, arise when we change what we do. That's no different than going to the gym. Uh, as you increase or challenge your body further, uh, you know, there, there's things that your body goes through in that healing and recovery process. So today I'm going to go over, as I said, a, a few basic things uh, more related to common user questions. And I want to leave a healthy amount of time at the end of this for questions from you. And then I've got a couple of reminders. So I'll leave the reminders to the end. And uh, for, for those of you uh, that have uh, questions. Uh, I'll be doing that at the end of my quick little spiel here. So I see I have 11 of you here with me. Can someone just let me know if they see and hear me? Uh, if you're joining me today, let me know where you're joining me from. Uh, for those of you that do not know, I am in uh, just north about an hour of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Uh, I've been uh, using the, I'm almost in my second decade of using these machines and uh, there's no uh, cookie cutter path to cross the finish line uh i'm just checking on uh, facebook here to see if i am live on my end there uh facebook user i sound great i'm glad you can hear me uh and uh, do i see my eyeballs on the other end i do okay so I'm going to close off Facebook and I'm going to give myself back to you guys here. So over to the machine. Uh, if you've watched any of my sessions in the past, especially if you're a new user, uh, here I have a bar height stool. It's an adjustable swivel little straw, uh, sw swivel style stool. And today I'm working on the Life Pro Waiver Mini model. Uh, the, the Mini and the Waver are probably the, the two most used machines in Life Pro's lineup. And uh, you know, one of the first common qu user questions I like to address is, well, which is the best machine for me? And that's probably very similar uh, to asking me, uh, what is the best exercise for me? Or what is the best gym for me? I don't know anything about you. I don't know what you like, what you don't like, what the goals are. So when you're selecting a plate, there is no such thing as a, a best place plate. Uh, even when it comes to a performance perspective, you know, you can have the, the highest performing $20,000, $30,000 vibration machine in your basement. And it's what you do on it and how consistently that, that ultimately leads you down the path to those goals. So 
Uh, I am doing the session today as I always do in what's called oscillating movement. So what is the best machine for me? The first point to understand is the movement style. And um, the consumer world of Amazon and eBay has really changed the landscape uh, for retailers and equipment providers out there. In the vibration machine world, like most pieces of equipment, uh, there's a lot more competition than there used to be uh, back in the day when it was just a couple of very expensive German medical devices. So what's happened is there's lots of companies out there selling machines. There's lots of different terms used for the types of machines. There's lots of different terms used for the movements. So I'm going to try and break it down regardless of model, regardless of brand, um, there's a couple of basic movement types. The first is oscillating. You can see I'm moving like I'm walking or like a teeter-totter. Uh, when you are using a vibration plate for the first time, you want to make sure that your knees are slightly bent. I think I'm slightly cutting my head off just a little bit here. Maybe if I go back a bit. Okay. So, Regardless of how you are starting on your plate, uh, if you are seated, if you are standing, oscillating mimics and feels kind of like you're, you're, you're shuffling really fast across the floor. It mimics how we walk. And in my opinion and my uh, experience, oscillating uh, not only was the foundational starting type of movement, uh, a German machine started this all, uh, it is the most natural feeling. It is the most functional uh, for training. It's going to give you the most functional improvements. Uh, it is also, more importantly, the most tolerated by you, the user. So um, if, if I lined 100 people up in front of every type of vibration movement, 995 or 96 out of 100 would prefer oscillating movements. Our body doesn't like change. It doesn't like different. So this feels most natural to it. <coughs> In my opinion, as a trainer and my experience, I also feel oscillating. If you had to pick just one to use long-term is going to offer you the most benefit. It's also going to offer you some very short term gains. Uh, balance is, is the number one reason I prefer using oscillating over any other style. Uh, balance you know, your, your body, when you're standing on this machine, is, is sort of forced to stabilize itself and stay upright. And a lot of my therapists, uh, a lot of my special needs families will use the machine for just a minute or two before they're doing other exercises. So you are more stable. Um, if you're heading out the door and you've got to go somewhere, if you're going to do other exercises and, and you find that you're not uh, progressing or pushing yourself because the fear or the stability is not there, um, or the fear is there and the stability is not, um, just using your plate, uh, the first session, I guarantee most users experience an improvement in balance. Uh, this is a physical experience. This isn't like red light or, or infrared where things take time. Uh, on a vibration plate, it is a mechanical stimulus of frequency. Um, the movement of the machine changes the stimulus, so the frequency and, and the programs, and those are a little bit different. I'll get to vertical next. So every one of Life Pro's models offers oscillating movement. Um, some of yours have other movement styles, but there, there's a reason they all offer oscillating, and there's a reason I do all my coaching sessions in that. Uh, for those of you that are familiar with pulsation, uh, that is a version of what we call vertical platforms, vertical platforms, the entire surface of the plate moves unilaterally up and down. Oscillating has lower frequencies, vertical has higher frequencies. And the reason for that is they have different amplitudes. So the most important point, regardless of movement style, and before I get a little bit more into lineal, is amplitude. Amplitude is the distance that the plate is moving or moving you each time it makes a movement. So if the movement is like this or like this, the distance that the plate is moving you and how far those muscles are expanding and contracting to, to counter effect the movement of the plate and keep you stable are much, much higher on oscillating. 
Oscillating plates move much more, but they have lower frequencies. Vertical plates move much faster, but they move much less in amplitude. The other main reason, do I sound like an oscillating fan? That I love oscillating as I work with a lot of medical users. I, I work with a lot of fear, uh, people that are recovering from severe situations. You are always in control. So put frequency, program, speed, benefit, all that aside. You are an individual person. And how the machine feels to you, uh, depending on the exercise that you're doing and, and where you're at in your personal health, um, can be controlled by how close or how far apart your feet are. And I talked about this in a session on the weekend. I don't know where it came from, but everybody thinks you got to stand as wide as possible to get the most benefit. Not true. Uh, what happens with, with most of my, my men users, sorry to pick on you, you get this thing home or your wife orders one up or your daughter or your kid perhaps, and, and you stand as wide as you can and you crank it right up to top speed to see what it can do. And you might feel like you're, you're actually having to fight it. If you're, if you're very deconditioned or you're not used to activity, you might feel like you have to fight and resist the machine just to stay stable on it. And um, that's not what you're supposed to be feeling. You know, pushing it and fighting it isn't going to give you more benefits. There certainly are some of my clients that like to use it that way. But the reason that you feel like you need to fight and resist it is your muscles and the machine can only move so far so fast. So in the oscillating world, you know, if, if, if you're not conditioned yet or you're trying a new exercise um, and you stand wide and you bring it up as fast as possible, your body might not be able to take that many movements with that much distance starting out. And this is the problem when we get into protocols and in science because everybody starts at the protocol, but when you're working with a three to six month old child with, with paraplegic um, symptoms, you, you might need to graduate into it and become assimilated. So wider is not better. And if you do have troublesome joints, you're supposed to reduce impact or body weight. You want to reduce the amount of impact. And I would suggest couple it with a higher speed level. So everybody thinks that we got to start slow. Slow is, is not the correct word. This isn't a treadmill. Um, I would suggest conservatively. So start more functional with your feet about hip width apart and bring it up to a mid speed range. You're about, um, uh, on this model at 99 speeds, I would say the 50 to 60 range off my Rumblex users, just in oscillating manual mode, you want to be in the 50, 60 range. You are of course, welcome to use any program that you want, but if you are using um, oscillating or you're using it as a combination of one of your moment movements in the 2D and the 3D models, you are in control. If it ever you are having a little bit of a freak out and it feels too strong or there's too much intensity, it's not the speed I want you to try adjusting. Try being, bringing the feet closer. And that's going to be ever more important of a lesson when you get into upper body and hands. Same lesson. Closer is less action. Wider is more. And that's a, that's a factor you can use to mix up your exercises, to create more intensity, more movement. But I do caution, I see all these questions and, and it's, it's, it's kind of the way that the industry evolved and many people start with a slow speed and go wide, but very, very few people talk about the amplitude. Everybody wants to know all the benefits for the frequencies and really to be honest with you, it's not all been researched and it never will be. The scale is too big, there's too many different issues out there, and there's too many competing pills in a bottle out there. So natural alternatives just don't get the funding for research. The lower frequencies, the, the consumer grade machines, um, have lower speed ranges in comparison to the medical grades. They're affordable, and if you are using a medical grade oscillating or vertical plate, I want you to exercise caution. Um, you know, any incidents or spooks I've had as a trainer have always been utilizing those higher frequencies. Those are not the case with Life Pro. So Life Pro, their average platform, regardless of what they may have told you in this sheet or in the manual, that's information the factory provides. I do this 10, 12 hours a day. I specialize in these machines and I've independently test tested all of my Life Pro models. 
the the waiver and the mini are go up to about 14 15 hertz depending on you and your mass if, if you're 400 pounds versus 60 pounds you know you may affect the machine by a half click or two um the the romlex models are more realistically 15 16. the romlex models have more than one movement so let's get back circle back to linear movement your pulsation pulsation is a much faster frequency you're not moving as much distance. So it's about 40 hertz. When you look at your machine and you see 40 hertz, that is not oscillating mode. That is pulsation. So uh, pulsation is moving like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 millimeters. On oscillating, you're anywhere from 1 to 7, 8 millimeters, depending on the model you're in. So again, the, the movement is, is much different. Pulsation is much more mild. So if you are dealing with very, very severe neuropathy pain, it's a nice alternative. Uh, if you're only dealing with oscillating, bring your feet dead center to reduce that amplitude. I'm going to, I'm going to drive that point home today. Uh, the last movement in the Romblex and that Life Pro offers is lateral. Lateral is completely side to side. There is no impact vertically. Um, I gotta be honest, lateral is really not my fave. I've spent too many years uh, perfecting the understanding of the, the, the vertical and, and the oscillating and the medical side of it. So maybe I'm a little biased, uh, but my clients that do use lateral uh, are sensitive to head vibration. They like it because it doesn't travel up the body. It's different, it's, it's good for chug and lymph and circulation as well. I like it just as, as a mix it up. There's not a lot of science out there to support that type of movement. Uh, it's, it's not really in the medical world yet, but many machines do offer it. Many of the new movements and the new features on these vibration machines did not come from the vibration machine world. They came from people like you that said, hey, I want a machine to do this. I want one to be pink. I want one that moves and feels this way. I want one that has preset programs so I don't have to think about it. So... Uh, circling back to speed on your vertical plates, verticals tend to have much higher frequencies, much lower amplitudes. That is your pulsation. The vertical machines from research are very loud, very intense, very heavy, and very expensive. They're moving much more, but they're still topping out at the three to four millimeter range, still double what you can utilize with your amplitude. And I personally feel, with all the years that I've been doing this training, Amplitude is the most under-discussed, unutilized uh, factor that you can do uh, to play around with your machine and mix things up. Um, okay, so other new user questions. Let's resume standing on the machine. Um, this isn't a common thing um, that, that people ask if I should bend my knees, but I do get a lot of people that ask, why is it so much in my head? Why is it shaking my ears and my dentures? The taller you stand, the more the vibration travels upwards. The more your body is like a pendulum, and all of that movement is going up to the head. If you bend the knees, the shock absorbers naturally kick in. So if, if you bend your knees ever so slightly, you're going to learn, if you keep going deeper, you're going to feel where you're directing that vibration and where you feel it. For all of my standing poses, uh, again, in oscillating, I prefer functional hip width apart, coupling that with a mid-speed range. I, I will never give you an exact number. I prefer ranges to encourage you to mix things up. Uh, I'm very much a creature of habit and like my moves. I don't tend to play my moves uh, around too much, but I do play with my settings. I might add weights. I add uh, variations and modifications to my basic four or five moves. Um, so at any time while you're standing, just like when we were sitting, if you're finding, even though you bent the knees, if it's just too intense, it's too much movement, maybe you got joint pain or swelling, reduce the feet, bring them a little bit closer to the center. The faster you go, this, it's not necessarily about more benefit, but a faster speed is going to be smoother, less choppy. And if you are dealing with deficiencies or you're recovering for something, the body is very lazy. It loves to guard and protect, and it's going to do everything it can to make this easier. So in the really slow speeds, the body tends to guard and protect, whereas as you get going a little faster, that blood and circulation is delivered a little quicker. Even though not as intense, you do have more movements per second. You'll notice the relax, the energy, the pain subside. I hope 
a, a little bit faster. That's just a tip. Um, okay, uh, shoes. That's another very big common question. So am I wearing shoes today? No. For any of you that have watched my session, uh, my sessions, these are my running shoes. You'll see me shoveling in the driveway. I'm always living in flip-flops or slippers or slides. I very rarely use um, shoes on the plate for one reason. That's how I was taught. I was taught by a, a, a German medical provider. My husband and I had a studio for a number of years. Shoes to me are a preference to new users. When you're first starting out, if medically you're dealing with with, you know, you've got supports or you've got some new orthotics or you've got a deficiency in leg lengths, perhaps, um, you know, if, if you are being advised by your doctor to wear supportive footwear or leg wear while you are doing activity, the machine is just an environment. You know, it's not do this for bone density or do this for weight loss. A vibration plate is an environment that increases the effectiveness of your floor exercises while reducing the amount of effort to you, the user, and um, it, it, it reduces the amount of time you have to spend doing the exercise. So less time on bad joints is also good. Um, but for those of you that are, are looking at substantial weight loss, gaining strength, you know, you're trying to make up for lost time, but you're, you're in a position of poor health, you can push your muscles to a level of fatigue faster on a vibration machine than you can on the floor. So that, that's kind of a win-win for many people. The shoes, um, if it, you may need to, and to if, if for stability, perhaps you're dealing with sores on your feet, perhaps you're just not comfortable yet, but shoes are a good place to start. I prefer bare feet because it's more natural. We weren't born with shoes. We didn't have Nikes 3,000 years ago when we were you know, chasing the, the boar through the jungle to go catch dinner. So I would like you to experiment barefoot or sock foot um, if you're dealing with neuropathy or deficiencies in the feet, especially uh, shoes kind of to a degree dampen the stimulation that the, the, the plate exposes your feet to, and they kind of let your feet cheat. So the whole goal, if you are dealing with foot deficiencies, is to improve it and make them do a better job on their own. Um, if, if you've got wedges in there or, or pro ill proper fitting shoes, um, not only are they absorbing some of the stimulation, but... The, the, the feet might be able to cheat a little bit because the, the, the shoe's doing a bit of the supportive work for them. So try using the plate with no feet. Uh, I think if you have been using runners for your fitness positions and you drop them and go to your socks or shoes, you're going to find it feels more intense and it may improve your fatigue times. Um, it's, it's, it's really, for me, uh, a preference. Uh, but I do find, especially with a lot of my medical conditions, a lot of my kids with CP, those dealing with the neuropathy, those types of things. Um, the, the first time I ever um, put someone on the plate with bare feet, they, they, they felt ticklish. They felt their feet. They were regaining nerve function just while they were doing the machine. So it kind of got me excited to continue with bare feet. And, and I've just long term for those specific things, seen better improvements short term. Um, what else? New user questions. Um, the itchiness, the, the swelling, the hives. Um, sometimes when you start exercising again, um, you know, things come up, uh, when you exercise, your, your body goes through periods of inflammation. Inflammation is, is what our body goes through as a healing process. So there's bad kinds of inflammation, but inflammation is also something our body goes through as we change it, when we push it. So uh, there's detoxification. There's all kinds of other things going on. So if you are a new user or you're about to be, or if you're a past user that went through this, that itchiness, that pins and needles, um, like the feet are falling asleep. That's a very, very common thing simply because the circulation and, and, and the lymphatic system get moving so efficiently, so quickly. And if you've got toxicity, that's all sitting in the lymph fluid. You know, there, there's thing, many things that are expedited. So common sense, make sure you're drinking, giving your body the fuel, getting the rest. But that itchiness is very common. Uh, if it's extreme and you can't stand it, um, don't go the full 15 minutes. You know, reduce your times, reduce the intensity. You know, more intensity and more time is, is just going to make it a little bit worse. So if you're extremely sensitive, 
you know, you're very frail or very thin and it's just driving you nuts, uh, reduce the amount of time that you're doing it. Maybe do a couple of sessions for the first week or two and then start extending times. If you are dealing with POTS, uh, there are a few conditions out there um, where some folks have a bit of an, uh, a histamine response due to, an elevated histamine response due to an increase in activity. And these things would present, you know, whether you're going for a big jog for the first time, um, you know, uh, using equipment at the gym, it's not specific to a vibration machine. It just may happen faster. So if you are, uh, one of those people that tends to have a histamine response, uh, to exercise, it's very easy to overdo it. Keep your times and your amplitude, the distance between your far, uh, your feet or hands, conservative. And, and if you tend to take a any, any histamine or something as a preventative, uh, as part of your self-care, uh, not here to diagnose or offer medical diagnosis, but that's a common thing. Many of my users have told me, oh yeah, whether I'm going for a jog or aqua size, uh, th this is something that they do. So whatever you would do to manage that histamine response, do before you try your vibration plate, especially if you're doing long durations. Um, and I'll, I'll touch on one more point because it comes up a lot when people want to use it to, to, as a sleep aid for the sleep apnea. Uh, restless leg is a really common reason. And it just feels so good while you're using it. Uh, it's not so much an itch, itchiness or, or, or hives uh, like I just described, but sometimes it feels like when you're laying in bed, if you did a session uh, shortly before bed, like you're, you're still vibrating or, the, or your skin is crawling a little bit. The lymphatic vessels are just under that skin surface. So if you really ramped up and, and done a, a big, long or a really intense session in, or uh, position before you go to bed, yeah, it's not going to settle down right away. So if you're ultra sensitive, if you're using it for neuropathy before bed, helping you sleep in any way. I don't want you doing a long session anyways. I don't want you getting all exhilarated and then your mind's going crazy and you can't stay up. If you're using it as a sleep aid, try, you know, two, two to three minutes, uh, maybe a half hour before bed, maybe just before you brush your teeth um, and, and see. Once your body gets used to it, it doesn't tend to be as much of an issue. But when we're starting something new, we're paying attention. If you're dealing with chronic issues, you're documenting everything anyways. So I just want you to expect it. It's completely normal and generally dissipates within a couple of weeks uh, for my new users. Um, specific to those of you with lymphedema, lipedema, you know, maybe you're, you're wearing them for other reasons. If you wear compressions, I need coffee. Uh, should I wear my compression garments while I am on the plate? Kind of um, similar to shoes or no shoes. If you are to be wearing compression garments while you are on your uh, activity, if, if that's uh, doing your activities, if that's what your doctor has advised, you probably should start with your uh, compression garments on the plate. Now, that being said, um, I do want, you know, we're trying to improve your lymphatic system and, and we need to let just like your feet on the machine, we got to let your lymphatic system do the work too. So I would love you to, to once you kind of got used to the speeds and the other newbie stuff and you're in your, I'm confident enough to experiment stage, uh, start taking some of those compressions off uh, and trying a session. Once, once you have to compare, okay, this is how I feel when, I, when I'm wearing the compressions and this is how it feels when I don't. And many of my ladies prefer it without. Um, however, with compressions themselves, if they're medical grade two, they can be such a pain in the beep to get on and off. The last thing for those of you with poor mobility, if it's taking you half an hour to get into your compression garments this morning, no, I don't expect you to take them off for two minutes just to do a session. So, you know, as you become comfortable and if opportunity presents, take them off, try it without, or maybe try them in the morning before you've put them on just to give yourself a bit of an energy burst. Um, but I do want you to experiment. And, uh, you know, some use a mix. You know, if, if you need a fix and they're on, then get on the machine. If you happen to have them off and that's your session time, it's, it's really just pay attention to how you feel and to a degree what feels best for you. Um, what else? Uh, I had a couple of more points and I want to move on to questions. Um, there, there's lots of different newbie questions. Probably the biggest one I'm going to cover is how long do I, do I do this or how often do I do this? And it's really more related to the goals, uh, what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And there, there's three basic reasons that people use vibration machines and the reason or the goals uh, in why you're using the plate often dictate the amount of time and how often you should be using the plate. 
the first reason that people use vibration plates is, is of course, general public use health and exercise benefits. So the, the, the exercises you're doing, the goals again, are kind of going to determine it. So if you're doing a workout and weight loss is the goal, uh, I look at it more of a per position thing. You know, you want to make sure you're pushing those muscles to a level of fatigue. Maybe you're looking at elevating the heart rate. There's different ways that we do this. Exercise duration is one of them. Making your positions more intense is another. But the goal, if, if you are looking to physically change the body, you want to push it to fatigue. And how long that's going to take you in the positions that you're doing, it's going to vary. It's not a do a squat for one minute four times a week, and I guarantee you'll lose five pounds. Everyone's going to be different. What I do recommend is if you are looking for fitness benefits, the weight loss, the strength, the performance gains, maybe you're an athlete conditioning for something, push yourself to fatigue. From then, are you looking at endurance where you'd want to work in longer durations or are you looking at more like a hit style? I want to get her done quick. Uh, so if you want to get her done quick, make the position itself as hard and as challenging for you as possible. Um, add some weights, you know, mix it up from week to week. Uh, how long the overall program is going to be depends on the number of positions you're doing in it. So for me, you know, these machines aren't meant to be a replacement to your two and a half hours at the gym. They are, uh, they increase the effectiveness of your exercises and reduce time. So ideally, if you're pushing yourself and, 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 and you're, you're challenging yourself in your positions, you should be pooped out in, in 10 to 15 minutes in a perfect world. You can be done in five minutes. You know, there's nothing wrong with having three to five really good exercises and just pushing yourself for broke. You know, maybe you like to do a couple of different workouts during the day. Maybe you're doing legs in the morning. I, I like to do my legs to get the metabolism up and going. Maybe you're doing arms in the afternoon. Um, moving on to, you know, so, so the exercise, I, I can't give you a number for time. And as far as maximum time, vibration exposure things, that has nothing to do with vibration machines. Anyone coming in and asking about, oh, well, I read it was only 30 minutes a day maximum exposure. Life Pro has to offer you a number, you know, you, because sometimes common sense has lifted the building. But for those of you that are coming in and asking about, you know, the hazards of long-term vibration exposure, that has nothing to do with vibration plates. That is occupational, that is workplace, that is big yellow things with four wheels tampers, truck drivers, occupational vibration exposure from a time perspective is not only much longer durations, like eight hours a day, five days a week for 40 years of your life. That's what occupational exposure is, overexposure. And the frequencies that you are exposed to, as I covered earlier on, on your oscillating best in the world, you might be topping out at 30, 35 hertz. In the vertical, maybe 50, 60, 65 on some plates. The average tamper is one to 200 hertz. So it's a very different type of vibration. The vibration plate is a short, purposeful load bearing. You're doing weight bearing exercises, seated exercises. With, with a tamper or a jackhammer, it's, it's that repetitive thing, like using a mouse. You know, that's also a workplace occupational thing, but it's not referred to as vibration. But everybody knows where the carpal tunnel is coming from. So don't associate, you know, sometimes simply due to similar technology, vibration machines and occupational vibrational guidelines get mixed up all the time. Read further. None of those studies or guidelines talk about you doing your squats on a vibration plate. Um, and last but not least, um, how often? So uh, back to the reasons you're using it for, for exercise benefits. The next reason is symptom management. So how often can you use a plate? Well, in an exercise program, you know, probably three to four times a week. Um, you know, if, if you're pushing a body part truly to fatigue and killing it, you should give it a day off for rest and recovery. But if you're, the second reason a lot of my clients use plates is for symptom management. So if you're using it for managing pain, swelling, headaches, uh, neuropathy, uh, depression, whatever you might be using it to manage. I often coach in my sessions for symptom manage. It's a very short, very purposeful kind of little spot treatment. So a lot of times it's really only two to three, maybe five minutes use. And I'll tell you right now, if you're in pain and your vibration machine's helping you out, I don't really care how many times you use it today. I'd rather you get active and get moving 
that's all that it is. It's just movement. It's not shockwave therapy or anything like that. But I'd rather you do that than lean towards the pill. Okay. Um, and if you are dealing with severe pain, severe symptoms like fatigue, swelling, um, very poor mobility, the balance thing I talked about, short, very purposeful sessions as needed throughout the course of your day, really whenever you want. The good news is, you know, eventually you're not going to need to use it as often or as for long, but make sure you do use it consistently. If you're using it for symptom management, just because you're feeling better, don't stop and, and, and step, keep doing the thing that fixed it and keep the maintenance going so that it does not resurface. Okay. And the very last reason, uh, as far as the frequency, you know, fitness and, and exercise isn't going to be as, as often symptom management is going to be when you need it. There's a combination of that as well. So the third reason people use vibration machines is to combine with other things, or maybe they're using it to get back to those things that they love doing. So sometimes a vibration machine is a catalyst that you're using. It's, it's, it's something more people can do than traditional activities, less impact, less time. So maybe you're using it to bridge the gap and recover from something to get back to something. Maybe you're using it in complement to your gym workout as a warm up or a recovery. Um, maybe, as I said, you're using it for symptom management, or maybe you're using it for aesthetic reasons, skin tone and these types of things so that you can combine the use of your vibration plate with other activities. And the more you experiment on the soft stuff, where the feet go, what the speeds feel like, the more you'll kind of learn what is the best combination for you. Uh, there is no best vibration machine for everyone. There is no best programmer setting for any one condition. It's, it's looking at you as an individual, the goals, what you're capable of, and quite honestly, what you're prepared to do. The machine is not going to do the work for you. I've had many, oh yeah, I just stand on it and I lost 80 pounds. You know, those stories are out there, but for the vast majority of you, you've got to put in some of the effort. So you can't just stand there and stand wider and go faster and longer and longer and longer you know, eventually your body's just going to get used to that. And, and what are you going to be up to an hour or two a day? Mix it up, get purposeful in your exercises. And if you need guidance, there's more than enough videos on this page from myself, Amber and Roseanne, um, because there's never one. If there, if there was a book on every type of exercise ever done in the history of the earth, the book would be about this thick. The machine's just an environment with modifications, pretty much any floor based exercise can be done on the machine, any stretch. And then you get the added bonus of being able to do massage in a lazy way. Um, uh, so picking a machine, I kind of want to circle back to how I started, you know, understanding a little bit more now when you're selecting a machine, again, it's not always the biggest and the baddest. I coach in oscillating mode and all of the, the, the performance in oscillating between the models are fairly similar. Um, it often, the, the most important thing I want you to think about if you're still just in the deciding phase is where do you see yourself using it? So based on some of the reasons people use machines that I just covered, if you've got a big old dedicated space and a, and a gym that you go to, and you're already in that mindset and discipline, you know, you may want to look at one of the Rumblex or the bigger models because you're not planning on moving it around the, the, the Rumblex models be, with the three different movements or the turbo, um, or the, the Hovert, where you've got more than one movement type, each movement type is a different motor. So if you've got more, you're not going to find a machine that's this big with 15, 20 different types of movements and features because they all require more components. So the Romblex tend to be larger, heavier because they require more housing for the functions that they will perform. The waivers, the minis are just oscillating. So they tend to be more compact, a little bit lighter and are my best recommendation. If you plan to be moving it around at all, that's a very, very common thing. So you, you get this big, awesome machine and maybe budget allowed you to get the top of the line. And then, you know, you want to use it by your bed in the morning and upstairs in your workout room in the afternoon. 40, 50 pounds a couple times a day is a workout in itself. So look at how you're going to use the machine and just be realistic. You know, if, if you're just going to be using this for symptom management or just as, as a compliment, um, again, you don't need to get the biggest and the baddest. Be realistic and honest with yourself and how often you're going to use it and, and stop beating yourself up. You don't have to exercise on it, but I can guarantee you can certainly start moving and feeling better if you get started using yours. Um, I, I can't really think of any others. 
Um, maybe one that's coming to mind. There was a couple of questions this week about neighbors. You know, I'm hearing a lot of noise between upstairs and downstairs. Um, I can, I can do these sessions once a month and still other things come to mind. Uh, if your neighbors are hearing you, um, it's not a vibration machine thing. There's lots of different floors out there. You never know what's between them or, or what's not between them. So if, if your neighbors are complaining or, or it sounds very, very loud to you, very often excessive noise coming from a vibration plate is more about how you are standing on it and using it. So remember how I was talking earlier about take it on more than you're ready and you're like fighting and resisting the machine because you're going to try and beat it at top speed with your feet really wide. When you fight and resist the machine, instead of your muscles accepting the movement and expanding and contracting, you're fighting it and you're rigid and you're pushing all those vibrations back down into the machine and the floor to your neighbors to hear. So that's one reason uh, you're, you're taking on more than you're ready for. You're resisting it. You're standing too wide for where you're ready and, and you're driving it, the energy, the movement back downwards and fighting it versus accepting it up through your frame and so forth. The other thing that you can do um, is you can place it on a piece of carpet. You can put um, some dampening under maybe an exercise mat. Maybe you're just a large user or you've just got really thin walls. Uh, so that'll dampen some of the vibration. A lot of the sound is maybe in the room sounding worse to you than it truly is. It's the acoustics, the echo in the room. So if you're in a 14 foot vaulted ceiling, you know, you got aluminum panels all over the room, you're going to hear it more than in grandma's basement where there's shag carpet everywhere and, you know, big sofas and pillows because the sound is absorbed. So what you may be hearing may not be as bad as, as uh, what your neighbors uh, hear. And, you know, if, you, if you're using this regularly and you need to for medical or, or you're just, you know, you, you don't know your neighbors that well, maybe just let them know. You know, if sound is already an issue, just say, look, I got this new machine. You you really should only be using it for 10, 15 minutes max every time that you are. I'm not putting myself into a box, but that's just an average. So just let them know if you hear me using my shaking machine, please let me know. And and then if you need to, to dampen or troubleshoot from there, you can. So um, I, I, I said, hello, let me know who's here and, and how I think I've gotten, I've rambled enough. I want to hear from you guys. So Stephanie is here. Susan is here. Facebook user told me I sound great. Um, I want to hear from you guys. Does anyone ever uh, else have their eyeballs shaking? Susan, I don't know if you watched the beginning of this, but if your eyeballs are shaking, you're standing too tall. Bend the knees. Uh, something else that you can do in complement with bending the knees is bring the feet closer. So if you're standing really tall and your knees are not bent, all the movement is being driven up to the, the upper body and the, above the neck and the shoulders. If you bend the knees, those natural shock absorbers kick in. So if the eyeballs, the teeth are chattering, you know, the hearing aids are rattling, it's how you are standing on the plate. So try bending the knees to absorb. And if, if it's too intense or too strong, bring the feet closer. I also recommend crank the speed up. If you miss the beginning, Always start in oscillating, in Debbie's opinion. This is just opinion based on dealing with many of you that have had shaky eyeballs and chattering teeth. Feet under hips, no wider or closer, and a mid-speed in oscillating. Make sure those knees are slightly bent uh, starting out. Um, I felt the difference when you stand straight as opposed to bend the knees. Most people do, and there's a reason that happens. Um, I mentioned a couple times earlier that the body is like really, really lazy. And um, it's, it's not going to put forth one more calorie than it needs to. And one of the things it does, um, especially when you're standing on the machine with the knees slightly bent, if you're really pushing yourself in a squat, you may not even realize, but it's, it's not uncommon to travel and stand for, further up without even realizing you're doing it. Uh, in my studio, I used to have these big mirrors in front of every machine. So you could, you could watch yourself and make sure that your alignment and your posture is, is in good alignment. Um, but that's a very common thing. That's your body going, oh, it's too hard. It's too hard. And if you're dealing with deficiencies, bad knees, bad hips, bad back, bad ankles, anything that's supporting you standing on the machine, the body's going to guard and protect. So uh, if you're just starting out, you're not coming from a terribly fit place, keep the knees undone feet close together and bring it up to a mid speed. And I think you'll find uh, it's, it's more soothing than choppy and shaky. I hope that makes sense. What are some arm exercises? What do you want to do? Push-ups, shoulder press, tricep dips, 
any arm exercise on the floor can be done on the plate. What I will say with upper body exercises, just a tip, Barbara, um, just like when you're standing, wide is more action, more movement, more intense, doesn't mean more benefit. Closer is less movement. And what I would recommend is getting your shoulders in line with your hands when you're doing your push-ups or your modified push-ups. I'll illustrate that quickly, Barbara, here in a sec. Um, but if you are looking at your hands, if you're down looking at your plate, you're going to get your heads in the, the plane of vibration. Push your body just slightly forward so that the hands are, are under the shoulders and you're going to get it in the neck and the shoulders where you actually want the relief and less on the head. So if you've never done a push-up on the floor in your life, you shouldn't just start on a vibration machine. Focus on technique. All the machine is is an environment that makes your exercises more effective. So focusing on good technique is going to be the best investment of your time long term. Upper body. Just so you can sort of see this. If you're not doing um, push-ups right now, start on your knees. The, 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 the less body weight that you have going into the equation, the more you can sort of focus on that technique and not be distracted with, with fatiguing right off the bat. And just like in my standing poses, I recommend a faster speed, but a closer hand position. It's going to be smoother. Most of my ladies have tension and, and stress and, and the bra strap and, and the kid. And this is where we carry our day. And as soon as we get into stimulus on the vibration machine, we guard and protect and we fight and resist and we become rigid and you really shake your head then. Just relax. Keep your hands under your shoulders and just step, be on your knees and just see how it feels. Push yourself forward. Push yourself backward. The more you play with your angles, the more you'll feel where you want to get it from a therapeutic standpoint. But if you're just starting out and you want to start working get some pipes a little bit back the knees up a little bit you don't have to go from from here to here there's a lot of transition in between so the longer your core back the knees up a bit lean forward don't be dipping keep the back straight and you'll feel it's harder because you got more body weight going into the machine then back up a little more you get to a point where you eventually have to go to toes okay and if you really are pushing for gains, if you're dying and you're dying, drop to the knees and keep going a little bit if you can. So that's going to primarily with a push-up affects the muscles that it affects. But one that a lot of the ladies want to know about is this one, that bat wing. No, I do not like doing tricep dips. And I really don't like doing them on the machine for most users. Most people don't do tricep dips. And by the time you get into a tricep dip and get your position all, you're, you're kind of done and the technique goes out the window. So the easier way is while you're doing your push up, there's a little variation that I do. And I'm doing this on a slow speed so you can see it on camera, but I want you at a mid range. So this is my push up and my arms are kind of coming out at a 45 degree angle to target that bat wing and practice this on your knees. Take the elbows and just draw them up against the ribs. And all of a sudden, just by changing the angle, it's all that wing. And just hold still. This one's kind of hard to do reps on, especially if you got tinnitus or, or tendonitis or bad elbows or things like that. So just hold still. You do not need to be by dynamic in your movements. And you're going to feel that, that those little micro movements build and build and build. And then at one point, you're going to be done. Same progression. Back the knees up. Push forward, pull the elbows in, okay? Make sure the back isn't dipping, okay? And if you're looking for specifics, there's been a number of uh, other ideas, but I'm all about keeping it simple. Um, I did a, work, a, weight, shop, a weight loss shop workout, workshop this weekend, and um, the whole program, exercise-wise, is four moves with four massage. Like, I like to make my positions as challenging for me. And you don't need 20, 30 different exotic positions to, to do these things. Three or four very good exercises can represent a total body workout. The better your technique, the, the more bang for your time and effort. Uh, I hope that helped answer. Um, 
Stephanie, yes, it bothers my eyes sometimes. Stephanie, if you're having that issue again, reduce the distance between your feet. Uh, bring the speed up to a smoother speed. The slow ones are so choppy. And just make sure the knees are bent. Uh, if you're doing all of those things, it can be sometimes just related as a new user. As I said, we, we guard and protect in here because as women, that's that's where our deficiencies are. Just relax. When we guard and fight it, we're rigid and we tend to shake more than fluidly accept the movement. So I hope that makes sense. Um, Barbara, I hope that gave you some ideas. I've uh, Vicky says she has not got hers yet. Is there a set of exercises I can start out with for lower back pain? from osteoarthritis and fibromyalgia. Let me tell you, Vicki, those two terms, if you go into, I'm, I'm gonna empower you guys a little bit here to start doing some of your own looking. There's three to four sessions every week, and I've been doing this three to four years with Life Pro now. There are specific sessions for osteoarthritis, for fibromyalgia. Uh, there isn't an awareness day, I haven't done at least two or three times. But again, regardless of the label, the diagnosis, you are still a very individual person. So I could line up 20 people that both have fibro and osteo and, and the exercises, the durations, your starting points are all going to vary because you're individuals. What I will say for the osteo, a tip, weight bearing. There's no numbing number. There's no perfect exercise. Uh, many companies out there are marketing otherwise and saying this is the best frequency or this is the best machine for osteoporosis. False. Osteoporosis, anything bone related is about doing weight bearing exercises on your plate. The plate just makes it easier to do the exercises. And um, if you're dealing with, with, with severe osteo, short term, it's not even about the bones. It's about fall prevention. The biggest thing you want to do is get yourself stable. And the good news is the things we're going to do to get you stable is just spending a little bit of time on the machine, which is going to help with the fibro pain. Fibro pain is, is, Again, depending on, on your range of motion, what you want to do. But just getting some stimulation is going to get the, the, the blood oxygenated. It's going to get the lymph moving. It's, it's going to help manage pain depending on what the symptoms are. Pain's a common one with fibro. So is fatigue. When you're in pain all the time, you're tired because it takes away all your energy. So um, there, there's what I call you know the benefits you get while using the machine. And then there's the side effects or side benefits. You're also going to get energy. You're going to feel more stable, which is a big thing for the osteo. So um, it really, you know, there, there isn't a cookie cutter program. It's very much looking at yourself personally. And there's often short, mid and long term goals as you progress through this. But uh, you don't need to do separate things for the osteo and the fibro. Spending time on the machine and doing appropriate exercises and durations for the osteo is going to give you the relief on the fibro. I hope that makes sense. If the fibro symptom management was one thing I talked about, if you're having pain, you know, you might be doing something specific just to manage the pain. And what I've, I've, I've had many clients that had osteoporosis, then they had osteopenia and now they have no issues at all. And I, it's not because they're doing an osteoporosis program. Many of them were just using it regularly because it felt good and helped manage their pain but they were standing on it or they were doing squats on it or they were doing lunges or they were sitting on it. They were doing weight bearing positions. That's what helps the bones and consistent regular use long-term is the ticket with the proper nutrition and other supports, of course. Um, who else? Uh, replying to this, Vicky, Vicky, hello. You can also check out more YouTubes and videos. I will also drop some specific stuff, Vicky. Um, but you can search and just search, um, Debbie, D-E-B-B-Y, osteoporosis. Debbie, fibromyalgia. Debbie, lymphedema. Um, I, I, there probably isn't a session, a session that I haven't covered. And if you can't find one that I covered it in, then you let me know because I'm always looking for session ideas. Um, Stephanie, at what speed should you do the arm exercise? Stephanie, I'm going to ask you if you're just jumping in, you probably did not see the beginning. The beginning of this, I was talking about speed. There is no perfect speed. There is no perfect program. Speed, the faster you go, the smoother it is. So I would like you at a mid speed range on your push-ups with your hands closer together. The distance between, there's, it's never just speed. There's speed and there's amplitude. The, 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 how fast you're moving is your speed and how much is your amplitude. So there's a combination and I want you ladies with your upper body, especially if you're just starting out, you don't want more action than you're ready for. Bring your hands closer and, and make up the difference by bringing it up to a mid-speed. 
Really slow and choppy is not comfortable. Starting slow isn't where you go just because you're a new user. Trust me on this one. Uh, drop to your knees, Stephanie. Bring the hands closer. Uh, practice good breathing. And 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 um, if you haven't watched from the beginning, I did go over the speeds and the levels and that to a degree to help you out with your model. But I, I do everything in oscillating mode. And that's where you've got the control over the intensity. Couple that with a mid-speed range. You're going to find it much more comfortable and you'll probably fatigue faster. Um, Facebook user, I've been trying to get rid of a stabbing pain that runs from my head, neck to behind my right shoulder bone. Uh, being on forums two to three minutes is helping a little. Any more ideas? Um, it'll help a little bit. Um, depend. I, I don't like putting forearms on the machine. I went nuts on that in my seminar this weekend. Um, it's just not my favorite way to, everybody thinks oh, I'm going to do a plank on the machine. There's certain exercises in my opinion that don't translate well to the machine. And most people, when they do a plank are like this. So the movement is, is, is lots because your elbows are wide. So if you're doing therapeutic, if you're doing planks on the machine, take the body weight out of the equation, drop to your knees. Don't be really, really wide and slow and choppy. Bring the speed up to a mid-range. Are you noticing the theme here? Bring the elbows closer to the center. You may want to use a mat, if, if you know, because depending on how your, the surface of your machine feels. But what I would prefer, it's more functional. You're going to get more benefit. Just come up to your hands. You're going to get the same action in the shoulders, but it's it's less direct. There's no, no joint here. I think if you're dealing with deficiencies or trying to get out or not, this is a really good way to do it. Um, another thing that you can try, oh, I don't need to do this, is seated. So for those of you that can't stand for long periods or you're using it at your desk and you've been on the mouse too long, um, put your feet hip width apart. You want to make sure you're at a good 90 degree for those of you using a chair regularly and take the elbows and put them on your knees. And, and while you're here, you're a little bit more relaxed. You don't having to support yourself like you're on your knees on the plate. And do like, you know, like roll the shoulders up. You know, like, like you're, you're arching up like a cat or turn this way. This is just another way to try and get into that shoulder. The other thing that I would recommend uh, if it's kind of in under the shoulder blade is to experiment. I get one there. Because I sit at a desk that's probably too high for my chair sometimes. So I'm always like this. I like, this one's kind of a pain in the butt to do. I haven't done this one in a long time. But if you've got range of motion, sit on the machine. Use a mat if you need to. Take your hands. This is just a shoulder blade stretch. Take your hands if range allows. You're going to wrap them around your ankles because you want to hang on. I hope you're seeing that. So you're hanging on for dear life and I want you think like you're a, a puppet and there's a string attached and somebody's pulling you this way. So you're literally trying to like, you're pulling your arms out of their sockets. I don't know how else to describe it. I really love this stretch and I do that for like three to five seconds. Release, relax the head. Another one that you may want to try, I think it's called a preacher stretch just on your knees, put your hands on the plate and just stretch. You know, it's not exactly in the area that you're trying to target, but it's, it's the whole joint. You're going to have tension elsewhere here. Okay. And then the very last one that I probably shouldn't be showing you, you know, once you've been playing with these things, 17, 18 years, like I do, you know, it is just a big vibrator, you know, would you be afraid to apply a massage gun in that area? Okay. I get down on the floor in front of the machine and I just let the edge of the plate, it hurts like hell. You might, you might want to use a mat just on the edge of the plate. Just crank it up into a higher speed and just play around. It's, it's going to be a little bit wobbly on the head, but just sort of try and get the edge of the plate into that area that's giving you trouble. You know, it is just a big massager, so maybe that's one that you want to try. You are only limited by your imagination and your range of motion, and I'm here to fill in the blanks. I, I hope that makes sense, uh, and try that one. And, you know, you know, if, if you're going to a therapist or you're, you're going for any type of manual manipulation, 
use your plate for a minute or two doing, you know, whatever might be giving you relief before you go, you'll be a little looser. They'll get more work done. And, you know, sometimes when you've got, you know, chronic spots, issues of, you know, it's years and layers and layers of tension built on top of each other. And as you dig through the layers of those onions, uh, there, there may be, uh, ways that you can use your machine to make your other treatments or the other things that you're doing more effective. Uh, the, the new cups that Life Pro has come out with that Amber demonstrates quite often uh, is another maybe tool or suggestion for that. And I like using the plate prior to get that circulation and that blood going uh, for those as well. I hope that makes sense. Um, let me know if that answers your question, Facebook user, and experiment responsibly. A minute or two maybe on each pose, let me know how you feel. And that's a symptom too. So, you know, as you start feeling the tension build, if you buy your plate, don't leave it. Go give it a, a little shot and, and help break up that tension throughout the day. Another reason portable or the lighter models are so great, you know, maybe you're dealing with something and you want to hit it during the day, but you're at work all day. You know, take it with you if, it, if it's helping you give the relief. Uh, Barbara says, thank you. I hope that helped. Uh, Stephanie, thank you. Yes, I hopped on late. Um, my approach to the settings um, and, and what you do is very different than, than, you know, what, what the support, uh, the, the moderators of, of the pages are. Keep in mind, I specialize in this device. So I'm very specific and sharing with you more what is experience based. The entire industry talks the same way as far as starting. I've just learned from experience and it's more often than not that what I'm recommending as far as settings and where you put the feet, um, because I deal with so many below baseline and medical issues, um, or just people that are short on time. Um, I always recommend learning the, the, the factors that you control. So speed is just one of them. The amplitude or the distance between your hands and feet is the most important variable you can use to adapt to any position. Uh, what about spider and minor varicose veins? Uh, Carol, that's, that's what we talk about lots in our group. Uh, I have tons of them like really bad, especially after baby number two. Um, mine don't hurt. They, they, they look ugly. Um, I, I would say the appearance and the texture has reduced the, yes. Thank you. This is my, this is my Monday t-shirt. I was up till six 30 this morning editing. It's been a long day. Uh, and I booked my session two hours earlier. So I caught you all off guard. Uh, thanks for that, Rodney. Um, but spider veins, you know, I, some of my clients have experienced, um, the spider veins and the, uh, the, the, um, varicose get worse. And, and I will say to a degree, I, I believe that is related to excessive use. So if you're dealing with severe varicose, severe spider veins, keep your sessions more frequent and shorter. You know, you want to wrap up that circulation, but if you, if they're really in really bad shape, you don't want to wrap it up so much that they don't have the capacity to move it. So if you're dealing with very severe, very old spider and varicose veins, maybe you've had some worked on uh, and removed, maybe you had lymph nodes removed, keep in mind your system has to process what you're doing on this plate. So if, if you know, it's fine to say I feel great doing 10, 15 minutes, um, but generally speaking, when I see an increase or a worsening, whether it's short term or long, I've, I've seen varicose base veins burst uh, on some of the medical devices because you know, I know it feels great, but you're using these incredibly powerful machines. You don't need to go 10, 15 minutes. So start conservatively, Carol. Um, you know, I would say, you know, five minutes, uh, two to three times a day versus one big long session. And just make sure that you're hydrated. Keep an eye on them. Um, if you are dealing with neuropathy or other things associated with that, um, you should start regaining sensation or if these are causing you pain, a reduction in that with, with regular use, probably within a week or two. And just keep me posted, Carol. Tag me at Debbie with a Y. Uh, if you guys have any questions, sometimes the comments get crazy and, and you type D-E-B-B-I-E -E or you don't tag me. And I don't always get the notifications. So make sure, um, for those of you that I've said to follow up, which is a lot of you, and I haven't seen a lot of tags this week, or if you have a question specifically for me, um, whether it's maybe seeing this on a recorded basis or you've reflected on something, just tag me at Debbie at a Y and I want to make sure I get a response back out to you. Okay, what else? Uh, Laura here. Yes, that's the way I put forearms on. Thanks for more ideas. And I don't want to say that you can't do forearms, but if you're doing it for planks, where you've got all that body weight in, 
switch it around. I like to, with my planks, I put my arms on the ground and my feet on the machine. Uh, you're more level, you wobble more. And, and if, if you're dealing with shoulder issues or, or you're just deconditioned, we as women don't tend to be as strong above the waist as, as our male counterparts. So often, you know, by putting your arms on the machine, you're, you're making, remember, the exercise harder. So that part of it's harder. Your legs can go all day. So switch it around, put the legs on the machine, arms on the ground, and uh, try that as a, as a variation as opposed if, if you're doing planks full on. Uh, for therapeutic, play around. I love doing it seated. I'm just sitting there with my, my phone clearing my messages. And uh, look online. Any Anything, you know, best five shoulder stretch exercise. Look online. All the machine is is an environment. You can, you can modify and translate pretty much extra, any exercise or stretch onto the environment of the plate once you kind of understand the factors. Who else? Well, it looks like I've either talked you all to sleep today um, or, or perhaps um, you've got a grasp and, and now you're, you're, you're on your machine uh, implementing some of these things I've suggested today. Um, I appreciate you joining me. Um, if you do, like I say, uh, or see this on a recorded basis, or you think of something after the fact, tag me at Debbie with the Y. Never forget to do that. Don't forget also that, um, we are having a review contest. So, um, if you are a life pro, hang on. I, I thought I just put that. Yes. If you are a life pro, uh, owner and you have not reviewed your product, get her done. Any review going back to the 1st of September of last year um, doesn't mean purchase date. You know, maybe you've got something that you bought and you haven't done a review. But anybody that's entered a review since the 1st of September will be entered in this draw. It's coming to a close very, very quickly. So it's getting down to the wire. I have just dropped a link in how to access uh, the details for that one. There is also a giveaway for those of you that are not aware Life Pro's given away $5,000 worth of gear. So I want to make sure everybody knows uh, about that one as well. I'm dropping a link. Uh, there are some pretty amazing prizes to be had. You can uh, go into the link and you'll see the different prizes uh, available there to you. Now, okay, there it is. So do your review, enter for your $5,000 giveaway. And do what I told you and implement some of these. There's no perfect way to use a machine. There's no right or wrong. Um, there's no perfect study. There's no, this is what this company said. There's you and what feels best to you. And I'll tell you right now, even if I think this is the best way or the best setting or best program, if you don't like it, you're not going to do it anyways. So do something and that's going to appeal to you. Be realistic in, in, in setting some goals and, 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 you know, look for a simple yet effective approach to get from point A to B. Consistency is the key. Use your plates regularly, whether it's for health and exercise, uh, whether it's for symptom rela uh, relief, or whether you're just doing it for feel good relaxation. Uh, there, there's lots of things that you can do. And I, I think where people struggle with, well, what do I do on the machine? Is if you're not coming from a place of being a regular exercise person, if you don't exercise for a purpose, uh, and even some of my top athletes, I've had some pretty five-star celebrity basketball players and football players, and, and they don't get it either. They just stand there because that's what they see in the, in the marketing and what they see people doing at studios. So you can just stand on a machine, but in my opinion, if you can start getting some exercises, start understanding what these speeds do, what the amplitude does. Uh, you're you're going to have not only a, a better understanding of how to use the plate for you and the exercises you're doing, but it's going to give you a lot more ways to manipulate and change things without having to learn a whole bunch of, of new moves. After about three to five months, you'll find that, you, you know, you got your three to four fitness moves if you're doing that kind of thing. And you got your four to five feel good moves. And you could literally just mix up the settings, add some accessories, mix things up with those basic things. Um, you know, sometimes too many new things or a bunch of exotic exercises is intimidating. And it's a good excuse not to do anything. So don't let that be you. Uh, thank you for joining me today, guys. If there are no more questions, um, let me know. Uh, if you have some after the fact, and thank you for joining me today a couple hours early, don't work too hard. Have a great rest of your Monday, and thank you for joining me today.
Thanks, guys. Have a great start to your week.